Last week, we began a series on different parables of Jesus. Parables are little stories about everyday life that we can get a spiritual lesson from. And last week, we talked about the message of the soils. There were four different soils. One soil was hard and didn't receive the seeds. The seeds represent the word of God. And when the seeds land on the hard soil, they're just there for the birds to take away. And some people's hearts are like that. They're hard to the truth of God, and they don't allow the truth to come in. Jesus went on to say that there's another kind of soil. There's soil where there's rocks in the soil, and the plant starts to grow, but because there's not the depth of the root system to grow, that it just it goes up for a little while, and then it withers away. And Jesus says, this is like the person who receives the word of God, but because of all the difficulties of what it is to be able to accept God's word, they kind of say, well, it sounded good at first, but because the root system wasn't there and strong, they end up backing away from it. The third type of soil was soil that the seeds started growing as well in. But as they started to grow, there were also weeds growing in the, that spot. And as the weeds began to grow, it choked out the growth of the good plant. And Jesus says, this is for some people as well, describes their life. They accept God's word, but all the cares of the world and all the troubles and things that we have to deal with and all the things that are out there become so important that they become the weeds in our life and it makes our faith wither away. But some seed lands on good soil, good soil that brings forth fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. It's good fruit, and that's the type of heart God wants us to have, a heart that's fully open to take his word and to let it cultivate there and let it grow good things in our lives. And so that's what we looked at last week. And so we see that the message of the kingdom comes in God's word as we take the truth and we apply it to our lives. I'll come out here so I'm not standing behind all this here. So today we're going to look at a parable that talks about the value. Okay, we say, okay, that's how God does it. Through his message that he gives us through his word, it grows in our hearts. But, but do we really value the kingdom of God? We have to want it. We have to hunger for it. We have to thirst for it. And we're going to talk about that today, what it is to value the kingdom of God. And Jesus told a parable. It's one little verse in Matthew 13, 44. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure that's hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in joy, he went and sold all he had and bought that field. In old times, they didn't have banks. So if people had something valuable that they didn't want to get stolen, what would they do? They would bury it. They would hide it. And if you had a piece of land and you buried it there, then it would be safe. But sometimes it would happen, the person would die and the kids didn't know stuff was there. And so, so many years later, somebody's just out digging around in a field and they find that somebody's left their treasure there from many generations past. And so this guy says, hey, there's this field for sale, and I know there's something buried under it. And so I'm going to go out, and I want to buy this field, because I'm going to be better off owning this field with the treasure in it. And so with joy, he goes out, he gets rid of everything he has, he liquidates, so he'll have enough money to go and buy this field, knowing that there's something better waiting for him. Now all this talk of buried treasure is something we can't really relate to today. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show a video clip. If Jesus was telling this story today, this is what it might look like. How many of us wouldn't do what Jeff and Clarissa did? Charlie, you play it safe, huh? <laughs> um, if we knew for sure that we could get something better by getting everything we have, we would certainly, most likely, do that. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that's hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then, in joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys the field. The kingdom of God is so priceless that we would give anything and everything to be able to obtain it. Jesus said the kingdom of God can be found at a cost, but what does it cost? Does it just cost Sundays? Does it cost our 10%? Does it just cost a slice of our life? It actually costs us everything. It costs us everything. And this isn't just 
a idea that's just right here. We see this throughout the Bible as well. In Matthew 16, 26, Jesus says, What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Would a person sell their soul to have whatever it is that they're offered? They might. People do. People choose other things rather than choosing God because other things are more important to them. And maybe some people would say, well, I don't need the whole world. I just need this little part of the world. This is what will make me happy. This is what will make me satisfied. These are my priorities. And what happens is, is that people do still forfeit the kingdom of God because they're holding on to even just a slice of what the world has to offer. Jesus also said, and we say these verses all the time because he said this is the greatest command. This is what's expected of us more than anything else. But that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. To what extent are we to love God? There's a three-letter word in there. A-L-L. All. We're to love him with all our heart. All our soul, all our mind, all our strength. Not just a part of it, but all of it. That is what is required of us. To love him with all. And yet there's things in our heart that we love more than God. Or that compete with God. It doesn't mean we don't have room to love other people. Because if we love God with all our hearts, we'll have plenty of room to love other people because God's love is 100%. It fills us and it overflows to others around us. Back in the Old Testament, in 2 Chronicles 16.9, it says, The eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. How committed? Fully. Fully committed. Oh, there's lots of people whose hearts aren't committed to God at all or barely, and they cry out to God, strengthen me, strengthen me. But God wants to strengthen those whose hearts are fully his. That's his promise. If our heart's fully his, he's going to be there to give us strength no matter what it is we're going through. Because if our heart is fully committed to him, then we're not going to be relying on other things that aren't going to give us the strength we need. That's where we go wrong. But if we're fully committed to him, he's going to give us everything we need for whatever is going on in our lives that day or that particular time. If an athlete wants to win the game, the best athletes are the ones who are what? That last line, fully committed to their sport. They're the best athletes because they give it their all. And Jesus said these words. And he wasn't just talking theoretically. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. That's a hard verse to grasp. Because what's it mean? It means that we're not going to put ourselves first. We're going to put God first. And it's not about me, myself, I. It's about being able to go to the extent of being committed that Jesus was committed to. And some people translate this, take up your cross, it means I'm going to have hardships in my life. That's not what it's saying. It's saying we need to be as committed to God's plan as Jesus was. Jesus' commitment to God the Father took him all the way to the cross. And we need to be as committed to that as well. This isn't a, an optional thing. It says whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to follow Jesus, this must be our goal is to give him that same focus that even Jesus had. And we, it takes us time to get it. We work on it. It doesn't come just in a snap of the finger. But if our heart's intentions are to grasp for that, and we want that more than anything else, to follow after Jesus and to go his way, that he's going to strengthen us. He's going to help us to be able to do that because we're going to be following him. And he wants to see us mirroring him in our lives. Do we take opportunities to grow 
as citizens, as disciples of the kingdom of God? Do we grow and do we take these things to heart? That's our challenge to us today. And I think all of us can see where, do we really value it? Do we really value it and take stock? There's not a whole lot of application in this sermon. I can't just give you three things to go out and do. This is just a change my attitude type sermon. But evaluate our hearts. And do I value God's kingdom more than anything that I'm willing to give anything and everything to be a part of that? You know, I want our church to be a place where we have opportunities to grow so we learn about God's kingdom, that we can fill our hearts with the kingdom of God, but also to be able to serve, to serve each other that are in this room, to serve the community and the world that's out there. And if we're doing that, then we're being his disciples. We take it in, we live it out. We take it in, we live it, live it out. We need to value the kingdom of God. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that's hidden in a field. When a man found it and covered it up, and then in great joy, he goes and sells all that he has. If you, if you step back and take in the big picture, you can tell this property has a lot of potential. Son, if I step back any further, I may need a tetanus shot. Mr. Smith, the point was for you to find us something that we could develop inside the city. No, oh, we are in the city. Uh, downtown is just on the other side of the, the freeway there. I think everyone wants a freeway in their backyard, don't you, If Ed? you take a look at the, the price per acre, it's, uh, it's Since, really uh, excellent. When did your company start handling urban blight, huh? Don't worry, what? son. This isn't as bad as the last property she showed me. Isn't that your phone? Shouldn't you answer it? Uh, it's just my wife. Just his wife? Yeah. Don't you think it could be important? I mean, your house could be on fire. Uh, I guess you're right. Uh, I'll just, I'll just be a second. I'm in the middle of a sale. I don't, I don't know. Did you check the, the printer cable? I gotta go. I, gotta, I call you back. Stop. Uh, you haven't seen the, uh, the best part. Call us when you have something with a little less potential.
listen. You're not going to believe it. Johnny, Johnny, so sorry I called in the middle of it. Honey, this, like the table. Honey, honey, this is going to change our lives forever. Oh, you found Peter's bucket. No. Hey, Peter, look what Daddy found. What's uh, that? Careful. What's what? Looks like black mud. What? It's dragon snow. <laughs> what is it? It's oil. Oil? Oh, now the car's leaking again. Peter's got it all over. Peter, no, come wash like your hands. No, like oil, oil. Like the, the kind you get from the ground. You know, black gold. Texas tea. Seriously, what is no, it? No, I, I am being serious. I found it on that old property I was showing today. I, I started looking around, and it was everywhere. Oil. Clarissa, it's for sale, and we have to buy it. Do you have any idea how much it's worth? Mom, it's not coming off. Uh, use more soap. Okay, so you're showing this property, and oil just starts spurting out from the ground? No, 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 it was, it was under rocks or something. It was kind of hidden. Jeff, it's some kind of dumping ground for industrial waste. Peter, scrub harder. No, Clarissa, the property's been sitting there for 50 years. They, they were going to build a factory on it in the 70s, but the city just moved in a different direction. It's just been sitting there waiting for us to find it. They didn't build there because it was polluted. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove it to you. Mm, I'm going to so. prove it to you, and if it is real, we'll buy it, right? It's not real. Mm -hmm, but if it is? It's not. Stop it. Okay. But imagine it was. Jeff. I mean, if it was, we'd buy it, right? If it will get you to stop talking about it, yes, we'd consider buying it. But it's not. Consider nothing. We're going to be rich. Like New Year's? Probably billionaires. Jeff. Gazillionaires. This is classy crude. High viscosity. Lightly sweet, that means it's low in sulfur. <laughs> Where did this come from? So it's it's not industrial waste. No, no, it's just it's not refined. <laughs> My guess is that it comes from West Texas. You 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 think this is from Texas? I knew it! I knew it! Can you can you can you tell me how much there is? In, in Texas? No, where this came from. Is this from the Gulf? <gasps> I can tell you on one condition. This is the middle of the city. Here's where I found it. That's the freeway over there, right? Is it really oil? Uh, oh, well, it, it, it's oil. There must be some, some kind of underground reservoir underneath us. How, how big a reservoir? Oh, I couldn't say. Could, could you say kind of big or you know, really big? Uh, well, without more seismic data or uh, they're digging a well, I, I, I couldn't say. No, it'd be impossible to say. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> right here in the middle of the city. You, you do own this land, right? That is a lot of money. Not that much. It's not that much. Jeff, we can't get that kind of money, especially with our credit. Look here. Now, we'd have to sell a lot. A lot? This is everything. Wait! You've got my Limoges on there! Oh, please don't sell my Limoges! We got it for our wedding! I love the pattern so much! Limoges? I'm, I'm talking untold riches in, and, and you're worried about your dishes? Honey, honey, I will fly you to France, and I will replace every last one of them when this is all over. I promise you, all right? Now, come on. Sit down. All right? I want you to look at this. Now. We'd have to sell the house, right? Which your grandmother uh, left you when she died and your and, dad grew up and here. And the appliances, uh, my clubs, your car, uh, the silverware, of course. Tommy told me you were selling everything, but I had to see it to believe it. I mean, what are you doing? Selling everything. 
Hey, you need a new amp? Mine's only a couple months old. You're selling the Nakamichi? How much you want what, for it? George, I warned you. What, where's Clarissa? She's oh, she's a real beaut. Under watts per channel, real clean sound. <clears throat> What's the story? I mean, uh, is a credit card debt? I mean, I can understand that. I can't believe you're doing this. What has gotten into you two? Nothing. What, is it debt? If it is, let us help. I'm sure we can spare something. It's not debt. Did Jeff lose his job? No. Then what is it? Clarissa, you have to tell me. Jeff said I shouldn't. Wait. You can tell me? <laughs> well, it's an investment. An investment? What kind of investment? Clarissa, you know you're not supposed to be investing anything you can't afford to lose. It's an oil field. An oil field? Oh, no. Clarissa, my uncle lost his shirt on one of those things. He drilled about a hundred times and kept coming up dry. Oh, I've got to tell George. No, no, please don't. He is buying an oil field. You have to say something to him. <laughs> so, what's this about you buying an oil field? Shh. It's not like it sounds. You're selling everything and buying an oil field. How's it supposed to no, sound? It's a completely sure thing. That's what they told my uncle. 25,000 later, and they were still telling him just a few more holes. You're going to have to trust us. Look, you've got a wife and kids. It just seems a little... Irresponsible? Well, I promise you, it's not. Mark my words. You are in for a serious letdown. Sir E. Us! You know, if you really need the money, maybe I should take the knock. What? Me. George! Are you sure you know what you're doing? You can still get out of it, you know? It's a terrible piece of property. Awful location right on the freeway. You can't do a thing with it. I know. extraordinary find for the state, an unexpected reservoir of oil has been discovered deep beneath the city. The young couple who own the land are currently in negotiations with three of the nation's leading oil companies. According to leading geologists, its supplies are enormous. I'm supposed to say my line? I would just go, I don't know. Gosh. I'm just supposed to go. <laughs> Jamming. 
back and move that line again. Stand back. Yeah. Just do it. Hang on. Everybody stay in character. Mama. Oh, Here's Mama. Take. Child labor laws. <laughs>